the president is resting well. He's at Walter Reed. He is still conducting business, and he's still president of the United States. Meantime, Steve Mnuchin does confirm that he did see the president in the last few days. Nancy Pelosi did see Steve Mnuchin in person on Thursday. But what's the latest development on the two for your second stimulus check and stimulus package? And why has Mitch McConnell not told us what's going on with his own testing? This is 14. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Morning's LA Light in our new show on day two of 14. 14 days of isolation for the president, or at least recovery from contracting COVID-19. The president's medical staff says this Saturday morning that he will remain at Walter Reed for a couple of days. After that, they've given no further update. Certainly, there's a lot of ways to cover 14. This is 14 days of the president dealing with COVID-19 in the context of your second stimulus package and financial relief and economic recovery of this country. That's the focus of this channel, not so much the president's uh, medical condition. So in dealing with this coverage, I want to make something very clear up front. First of all, I'm not a medical professional. Second of all, I won't be focusing so much on the president's medical condition. And if you want to turn to channels like Daily Mail and things like that and hear a lot of conjecture, speculation, and what Chris Cuomo was saying last night about this and that and the days and when he may have contracted, I'm not going to go there because ultimately it doesn't concern us. What concerns us is getting our economy back on track, getting you the financial relief you need. And that's what I'm focused upon and still stay focused upon. So thank you for joining me and thank you for making yesterday's debut of 14 a big hit. Go to the Funnish channel, subscribe, so you will get an alert when a new video goes live. Also like this video. 14 is every day at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, part of our morning's programming block. And now as LA expands to four hours of programming every day. The incredible news as we deal with this Saturday morning is that negotiations continue for your second stimulus check, despite the condition of the president. His situation at Walter Reed is a working office. I will make that very clear to you. The president has complete ability to communicate with his staff. He is speaking with his staff, and he is working at Walter Reed. So I want to make that very clear. Yesterday, uh, Mark Meadows, chief of staff to the president, who has been the singular closest voice to the president during the stimulus negotiations, visited the president. Remember, Mark Meadows is no longer in the negotiation room physical room or on the talks with the over the phone with Nancy Pelosi after a series of weeks in which she said she had problems personally with him and now she's only dealing with Steve Mnuchin. So Steve and Nancy are negotiating. Mnuchin then communicates to Meadows and now Meadows is speaking to the president either in person or somehow in the presence of the room. Meadows was at Walter Reed yesterday, spoke with the president. The early, and that's at the end of the Friday. Early on Friday, the president woke up at the White House and immediately spoke to Meadows in person. And first word was, what's going on with the stimulus negotiations? So the president can and will push along your negotiations and wants to. The president's very key on a few subjects as we start the Saturday morning. First, getting your stimulus checks out. He made that actually clear in the last few days. Second, he wants the stimulus package to be done. Uh, the sense of urgency, the the push, how much in, uh, encouragement he has, we really don't know. I will say to you this, Nancy Pelosi's comment yesterday that the president contracted COVID-19 and that changed the landscape. I really didn't like that comment. I really don't like that comment because it has a lot of strange innuendos to it. But I will tell you there's no indication that the comment was true, that that comment is a true reflection of the situation. Three, um, the negotiations will continue and that procedurally I want to go over to with you right now how they're going to happen. First, this is a very important subject matter that no one's talked about. Will the Senate go back into session on Monday? Yes. This is despite the fact that one of the senators who's on one of the key committees, whose name, uh, who I actually just, oh, here, I just remembered. Uh, this is Senator Lee, 
who's a Senate Judiciary member and has to cast a vote on Judge Barrett's nomination, he will not be present. He contracted COVID-19 in the last few days along with the president. He will not be present, but the Senate is scheduled to continue in session in on Monday and to begin U.S. District Court nominations for judges. This is not uh, the Supreme Court nominee. These are just district court judges, Ohio, Florida, Kansas, and Mitch McConnell will be present. Uh, Mitch McConnell was asked whether or not the sudden rampant number of COVID-19 cases among staffers and congressional leaders in recent days will change the progress of any stimulus negotiations or any Senate floor hearings. This is what's important for you to understand. He said, absolutely no. Um, He says he will continue the schedule as uninterrupted. Um, He says, since the pandemic started in the spring or February or March, we have not, it has not kept us from operating, and as we would not normally, there's no reason to expect it to be the case in the former foreseeable future. That's incredibly great news. Now, what's a little strange is that um, Mitch McConnell did confirm he was tested in the last few days for COVID-19. He would... uh, he confirmed he was negative, but he would not tell you when he was tested. There seems to be a re- reoccurring trend among politicians, and again, I'm not going to go there with this channel, uh, because this is what Chris Cuomo was doing last night. It was a little bit salacious as to when are people being tested, why aren't they telling us when they're being tested, and all that. I want to focus on your stimulus. Mitch says, we've been operating in the same environment now since the 1st of May, and we've been able to hold Senate business. There's no reason we can't continue. He told reporters in person on Friday in Kentucky as he's trying to run for his re-election seat. So this is incredibly great news. What about Steve and Nancy for getting your second stimulus package? Are they going to be meeting in person anymore? I, you know, in no disrespect to the situation, I used to comment about how Nancy didn't want people in her office. It's now more important than ever not to have people in her office. She was tested on Friday. She is negative. Steve Mnuchin was tested on Friday. He is negative. Um, the important thing to understand is that there, I would hope and, and that Steve Mnuchin is tested daily over the next few days because he was, ex- he was in the presence of the president in the middle of the week in the Oval Office, his staff confirms. They also confirm he is tested daily, so I hope he keeps up with that, and I send my best wishes to him and his family, and also to the president, uh, to Ms. Pelosi, uh, to Mr. McConnell, and everyone else that is discussed in this video in the context of COVID-19. But there's a big call among insiders in Washington, that congressional leaders should start to isolate who are in chain of succession. Nancy Pelosi, of course, is third in line in chain of succession, and Mnuchin is, I think, fifth in line in chain of succession. There's no likelihood that we're going down this chain of succession, but a lot have said that people should be kept separate. Needless to say, Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin generally do not talk face-to-face on a regular basis, and certainly on the weekends, they don't never talk face-to-face. They always do by phone. They are continuing to negotiate for your second stimulus package by phone this weekend, um, and that is really not a reflection of the situation. They just generally talk by phone, so that's incredibly great news. Um, let me get to the stimulus package, how it can be done in the context of, the four, of, the, of now that we're on day two of this 14-day period, and the issue of executive orders. First, let me go to executive orders. The president can do executive order. Um, I, I dealt with that on day one of, of, this, of this new series, but I want to make it clear again. The president can do executive orders. The president's ability to do things in the confines of a working office in Walter Reed is no different than doing things in the confines of the White House. As president of the United States, there's ways and methods for this president to effectuate laws, orders, and instructions as president of the, of the country, whether or not he's on Air Force One, whether or not he's in California on a trip, whether or not he's in a bunker in the, in the middle of, 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 of a strike against the United States, possible strike, or whether or not he's in Walter Reed. So the fact that he's in a different location means much of nothing. Second, his medical condition is fine, that he can conduct himself as president and make determinations. And third, people are asking me little minutiae, like, can he electronically sign the executive order? Don't worry. This is, you know, this is not 1920. So we're all, we all, everything is a yes to everything across the board. So categorically, Yes. The issue then is just simply, does he want to do an executive order? 
As we sit here today, the president had the wishes of the American people and the wishes of the airlines at issue. The airline's deadline expired on August 1st, which is a big concern. They laid off tens of thousands of people. He, ne he His um, press secretary on Thursday said, we can't let this go on. We got to get this done because I can't have the airlines implode. Well, the airlines are slowly making quick changes. The first thing is they're, they fired the people. Tens of thousands of people were fired, but they say, well, we'll bring them back if you give us executive order, if you give us some stimulus package. There is a lot of twists and turns about it, but the focus that I want to say to you for now is that there's there's a focus to get this done. Let me go over the details of the stimulus package. $1,200 stimulus checks, individuals, $2,400 married couples, uh, $500 dependents, adult and minor. It is not likely we're going to go to the $1,200. I'm sorry. Uh, we can fight more for it, and we will. But so far, it looks like all the forces involved, even the problem solvers, are not helping us. The problem solvers, the White House, the president, <laughs> which is the White House, uh, Mnuchin and Pelosi, all are pushing for $500 dependence. They think that's good. I don't think it's good. And they're also seem to be at one stimulus check. Remember the problem solvers had a second stimulus check next year. It doesn't look like that's happening yet. Mnuchin said that he would do adult, uh, multiple stimulus checks in the future if you need to, but it looks like this bill's not getting it. Um, not taken out for child support, not taken out for taxes, not taken out for collections. Family of four or five, it looks like not a family of six. Uh, I get a lot of questions about do I qualify for this? Do I qualify that for that? It's now. <laughs> Now's the alarm period. Alarm, alarm, alarm. Alarm is the time to make sure you are teed up to make sure you get a stimulus check. Remember all my recordings all these weeks where I said it's going to go very fast and I hope IRS knows where that child is. I hope they know where you are. And now is the time to, after this recording, go do it. If you've not done it, you got to do it now. First, if you are on SSDI, SSI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits, and were on benefits in 2019, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Second, if you are dependent on someone else's tax return and are still dependent on someone else's tax return, you have nothing to worry about. There are two groups, or actually three situations that I am concerned that you need to be concerned about. One you have never filed taxes in your entire life, and that you just went on benefits this year. If that's a situation, stay with me. Next, if that's your situation, stay with me. Next, you are on benefits and you have a child and the IRS doesn't know you have a child because you don't file tax returns and that child's on no one else's tax return. You have an issue. Stay with me next. Third, you had a new child and the IRS doesn't know about that child because for some reason as a married couple that makes, you know, uh, 160,000 uh, joint tax return every year. You haven't told the IRS about the child. Okay, all three of you, you, you need to go to the IRS's website, irs.gov, and do a non final filing right away. You need to make sure they know about your existence or your child's existence absolutely categorically right away. All right, who we get the stimulus check? We're going to have a lot of these videos coming up if this bill gets passed. Understand, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I've already said that very clearly. I'm going to say it again. I'm not leaving. And one of the big issues is ensuring you get your money. There's going to be a lot of things you have to apply for to get your money. There's a lot of things you have to wait to get your money. And I'm here to make sure you get your money. Stimulus check. Um, if you're set up for your SSDI and SSI and Social Security or Railroad Benefits and you're getting it by direct deposits, do not. You're hearing from me right now. Do not change your bank account between now and when you get the stimulus check. Do not change it. I don't care what's happening. Don't change it because ultimately that will mess up you getting your checking account. Um, don't let the checking account get closed because you're overdrawn on fees or something. Just don't do that. This is when your check is going to come. It could potentially come in the next 14 days. You don't want to mess this up. Next, uh, if you are dependent on someone else's tax return, they will get the check. If you have a payee for your benefits, they will get your check. Uh, if you're a family of four or five, <laughs> and you're a kid and you're watching my video, hey, how are you? Your mom or dad will get your check for you. You won't get the check to your, for yourself. Um, and then I get all these very confusing questions. You have custody of your child, but the child is someone else. Is it dependent on someone else's turn? It's what the IRS knows. It's not what the courts know. It's what the IRS knows.
All right, so let's turn now. Oh, FPUC. FPUC um, is the battleground. Pelosi's still at 600, Mnuchin's at 400. I don't know why he's at 400, because the problem solvers is more. They were at 450 to 600, he's back to 400. I don't know what's going on. Um, retroactive to September 5th, not retroactive to July 28th. And that would mean that you, if you were not on LWA, you're going to lose four weeks of benefits for the month of August. Yes, of that PUC. Um, the president remains fatigued but in good spirits, says a statement by his physician. Um, the memo was released and said, I released the following information with permission of President Donald J. Trump. Following PCR confirmation of the president's diagnosis as a precautionary measure, he received a single 8-gram dose of Regeneron um, antibody cocktail. He completed the infusion without incident. In addition to the antibodies, the president has been taking zinc, vitamin D, thimidide, melodon, and daily aspirin. Oh. That's almost what I take or my friends take. Uh, very, very good repertoire. As this afternoon, the president remains fatigued but in good spirits. He's being evaluated by a team of experts, and together we will be making recommendations for the president and the first lady in regards to the best next step. The this, uh, first lady, Melania Trump, remains well with only a mild cough and headache, and the remainder of the first family are well and tested negative uh, today. Um, and there you go. Drew Hammer, who, of course, is... Uh, Nancy Pelosi's press secretary or, or chief of staff says, out of abundance of caution, Speaker Pelosi was tested for COVID-19 this morning, which was, fr this is a Friday statement, by the Capitol's Office of Attending Physician, Dr. Monahan, just informed that Pelosi, she tested negative. Um, the statement I just read from the, the, the individual was, on behalf of uh, President Donald Trump, was yesterday. Remember, this recording is made at about 8.30 Pacific Standard Time, so events may change by the time that this broadcast airs. Let me go to some of your 820 questions from yesterday. Otis, this country doesn't give a damn about the people. It's just about themselves. Um, yeah, people are having issues still with this bill. Nancy's bill is being seen as a lot of bailouts for big government and not seen as stimulus and stuff that shouldn't be in there. Jim Cramer slammed the bill. Um, from CNBC on Thursday and Friday. Uh, senators that are Republicans slammed the bill yesterday. I've been slamming the bill for several days. You've been slamming the bill. It's really despicable that the bill has all the stuff in there that doesn't belong in there. And it's sad that anyone should have to vote for this. But Veronica, I don't wish this COVID on um, Lavana, present isolated. Uh, Barbara, I really don't care what people say. Don't, don't people understand they work with us, the people I'm fed up with the government? Antoinette, every day is something new that makes no sense. I don't believe none of this. Well, you know, if ultimately you believe no one and what everyone is telling you, then you're going to go nowhere in this situation. Berlinda, when can you get our stimulus checks already? Things are getting very bad. So, Brana Gunn, congrats on the new show. That means we get to see you more. Yes, you wanted a show that was between 8.30 and 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. So this is the one. Uh, why does the president sign executive orders and get this over with? I just don't know. Um, Liz Hall, we need $2,000 a month. For, why has no one pushed this with tweets? I've been pushing it all the time. Mike Bradshaw. Get the pen and paper out. Amen. David, it's bad that Trump has COVID, but maybe now he'll see this bill, executive order, make it be done. Um, Shaleba, get some rest. Christina, instead of no shave November, it should be no seat November. I love that. Um, Mike signed the law already. Nana, I'm so tired of hearing about these industries. What about us? SoCal Ronnie, the 14, purple power positive, love, hugs, and prayers and for our post of Lotus. Yes, 14 will remain a positive of broadcast. If there's any negative comments about anyone in the comments, you will see that I will skip over them. I'm doing always a cold read on comments. So if I if you see me pause, it's because I saw a negative comment and I do not want to air it on, on camera. Um, Lana. He's not too sick to sign executive order, correct. County Beauty, sending prayers to our president. Tracy, we need monthly checks. We really do. LaVon, he should sign the bill now. Um, Patricia, do the executive order. Mike, sign the law. <laughs> There's a consistent theme among these messages. I love it. Balua, um, praying for all of us. Um, Debbie, Purple Power Rules. M Benzer, the American people. Um, Jerry, give us the checks. As you start the uh, two, if you start your Saturday afternoon after this broadcast, there was a Rose Garden of, event on of the Supreme Court nominee for Judge Barrett a week ago today, and since that event, the following people in attendance 
have tested positive. President Trump, Melania Trump, Senator Thom Thillis, Senator Mike Lee, which I just discussed, Notre Dame President John Jenkins, Kellyanne Conway, and a White House reporter. Moreover, uh, this is this person, was, the person I'm just about to tell you was not at the Rose Garden event. Republican National C Committee Chair Rona McDaniel tested positive, uh, is now in isolation at her home in Michigan. She tested positive on Wednesday. Um, she last was in contact with the president last Friday, not this Friday, the Friday before that, and has been in her Michigan home since then. Um, after she received her diagnosis on Wednesday, um, she remained in isolation. So she uh, was around the president, not this Friday, but the Friday before that. And then uh, she got diagnosed that following Wednesday. Again, this channel is not going to be a channel that sort of chases contact tracing. I really don't care about that. You can go watch scandalous conjecture on other channels about that. That's not my focus. My focus is getting you money and getting you through this pandemic, staying positive, staying focused, saving your business, saving your family, um, saving your bank account, saving your home. And together, we're going to get through that together. Join me tomorrow for day three of 14. As all, and join me, of course, later this afternoon for afternoons, LA, it's our 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Go to the front channel subscribe if I forgot to say that at the beginning of this broadcast. Also like this video. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, and stay with allies.